Welcome back. This is chapter 4. The Enemy. Written by Pearl S. Bach. And today I'm going to explain page number 35th to you. So here we go. All thought left him. He felt only the purest pleasure. Now having found out the exact location of the bullet in the body, now Dr. Sadao's only concern, only focus was how to remove that bullet from the body and save the life of his patient. And as this location was found out, it excited him, it filled him with pure excitement. He probed with his fingers, delicately, familiar with every atom of this human body. Now, as he was well versed with every part of the human body, he had a uh, good knowledge, thorough knowledge of the human body and its parts. So he now probed, examined the bullet with his own fingers very delicately finally his old american professor of anatomy had seen to that knowledge and it was all due to the old american professor who made sure that his student had no doubt had no confusion about this body and that they had thorough knowledge, in-depth knowledge of this body. Ignorance of the human body is the surgeon's cardinal sin, sirs, and lecturing them. He would say that if a surgeon is ignorant of the human body, if he has no complete idea, no complete knowledge of this human body, then it is a kind of a grave crime against his patient. He had thundered at his classes year after year and he repeated his statement, this statement of his year after year in his classes. To operate without as complete knowledge of the body as if you had made it. Anything less than that is murder. And he would also say that uh, you must go to operate a person, operate your patient with such a knowledge as if you only had made this body and that you have complete idea of it and anything less than that anything less than this short of confidence in you uh, would be something like murdering that patient it is not quite at the kidney my friend so thou murmured and now after examining it with his fingers he realized that the bullet was not quite close to the kidney and he murmured these words and uttered him he mentioned him as friend it was his habit to murmur to the patient when he forgot himself in an operation when he got uh, too much absorbed in his work when he got fully absorbed in his work he would forget about everything and in such a state he would murmur he would talk to his patient and that was his habit my f my friend he always called his patients and so now he did and he would always call his patient his friend he would call my friend to his patients whenever he was lost in his work and his operation forgetting that this was his enemy and this time too he uttered the same thing forgetting that it was his enemy
this time. Then quickly, with the cleanest and most precise of incisions, the bullet was out, and then quickly, very swiftly, and with cleanest and most precise, that is, accurately and neatly, he cut that part of the wound and then removed the bullet from there. The man quivered, but he was still unconscious, though the man quivered as he removed the bullet from the body, but he was unconscious still. Nevertheless, he muttered a few English words in spite of this, though he was unconscious, yet he muttered a few English words. Guts. He muttered choking, they got my guts. So he uttered uh, words like guts, they got my guts, while still being at a state of unconsciousness and while his voice getting stifled. Sadao, Hannah cried sharply. Hush, Sadao said. Sadao, Hannah cried sharply. Hush, Sadao said. So, getting alarmed at the mutterings of the patient, Hannah cried out to Sadao. And in reply, Sadao simply said, Hush, to keep her quiet. The man sank again into silence so profound that Sadao took up his wrist, hating the touch of it. Now, as the man became very much silent after uttering a few words, now Sadao took up his wrist to examine his pulse, though he hated uh, the enemy's touch. Yes, uh, there was still a pulse so faint, so feeble, but enough, if he wanted the man to live, to give hope. Now, he examined it and he found that the pulse was still there though it was weak. It was very weak, yet yeah, that was enough to give him hope if he wanted, if Sadao wanted him to live. If he wanted him to survive, he could give him that life. It depended on him now. But certainly, I do not want this man to live, he thought. But then, uh, the thought came to his mind, and he said that, well, certainly, I do not want this man to live. That he did not want that this enemy should live. No more anesthetic, he told Hannah. Now he said, no more anesthetic, no more anesthetic was needed. He turned as swiftly as though he had never paused, and from his medicines he chose a small veal, and from it filled a hypodermic and thrust it into the patient's left arm. Now he realized that he needed no more anesthetic, and now he turned very swiftly. Very swiftly he turned to the other side as though he had never paused, as though he had never stopped uh, his work. And then from his medicine, from the box of his medicine, he chose, he lifted, he pulled up a small wheel and from it filled hypodermic liquid and thrust it into the patient's left arm that is he filled the syringe with the li liquid from the veal and then pushed it into the patient's left arm then putting down the needle he took the man's wrist again and then putting down that needle that syringe he picked up the 
man's race to examine it if there was any progress after injecting him with the life saving liquid the pulse under his fingers fluttered once or twice and then grew stronger and the pulse he felt when he felt the pulse the pulse at first fluttered moved once and twice and then it grew stronger that it started to the pulse started to grow very strong this man will live in spite of all he said to hana and sighed now the doctor said that this man was going to live despite everything that happened to him to his life and saying this to hana he sighed he uh, took out a deep breath the young man woke so weak his blue eyes so terrified when he perceived where he was and that hannah felt compelled to apologize when the young man regained consciousness a few hours after the operation he was terrified there was terror in his blue eyes as he perceived when he saw where he was that is he realized that he was again in the japanese set up all the set up in the house was japanese and he ran away he escaped from the custody of the japanese forces and again he was in a japanese house so that filled him with terror though he was weak he the terror could be easily perceived in his eyes and because he was so terrified that hannah was compelled to apologize she asked for forgiveness that he was so terrified there so this is all for now thank you